Anybody remember Sears? Circuit City? Hollywood Video? Blockbuster? Those are all stores that have closed. They shut down. They are no more. But right before they getting ready to close, they usually have a sign that says, Everything must go. And what this means is that customers can take advantage of getting things that they would normally pay a higher price for, but for a little bit cheaper. And these things may still be high quality, but because the entire company, the store is about to shut down, you can take advantage. Now, the Panthers, they find themselves seeming to be ready to shut down. They just fired their head coach. They got a terrible record. Things are not looking really good. And usually when things line up like that, everything must go. So to talk about some of those things that could possibly go and some of the things that the Ravens could possibly take advantage of, we brought on a very special guest. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Ain't no chance what I mean. All right, so team, keep it clean. Very, very special guest in the building. Uh, my guy, Nick, from uh, the Nitty Gritty Sports Talk. First and foremost, before we get into this, uh, let everybody know who you are, where they can find you at, and exactly what it is that you do. Yeah, for sure. And appreciate you having uh, me on and Graven. Um, oh, yeah. This is Nick from Nitty Gritty Sports Talk, um, comprised of four co-hosts, all from Baltimore. Um, basically giving it to you raw, you know, as far as uh, Baltimore sports talk, national sports news. Um, we have three resident Ravens, Ravens uh, co-hosts and then a Steelers fan. So it brings an ah. interesting dynamic. You know, obviously we're familiar <laughs> with each other in the AFC North, mm -hmm. but we all live in Baltimore. So we all kind of, you know, know what's going on with each other's teams. And we cover football, baseball, basketball. We've had Ravens on the show, uh, former NBA players, oh. um, D1 college basketball players, coaches, mm -hmm. um, you know, you name it, um, mostly all from the area. So we try mm -hmm. to um, definitely give that spotlight back to Baltimore athletes because sometimes those stories are forgotten. So, right. you know, we definitely try to revive those stories for lack of a better term. And yeah, you can find us on uh, Twitter and Instagram, Instagram at Nitty Gritty Sports Talk and Twitter at Nitty Gritty 410. And the link you'll find a uh, link to all our podcasts. You can view the catalog and so on and so forth. All right. I appreciate that. And, and I will have all that stuff linked down below uh, in the description just to make it easy for people to search for it. Now, one thing um, that I noticed about you, uh, especially on Twitter, that I really appreciate, um, because there's not too many people that are like this, because a lot of people can be kind of be afraid to sort of go against the grain or whatnot. Um, but I always appreciate uh, how honest you are and how straightforward you are in your takes, uh, especially when it comes to the Baltimore Ravens. Um, because a lot of people just like to go with the flow and hey, to each his own and that's fine. But I, I appreciate the straightforwardness that you bring with that. So thank you for that. Keep doing your thing. Keep, keep, keep shining, man. Yeah, for um, sure. And, and don't get it twisted. I love, we love our Ravens. Don't yeah, get it twisted. No, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and, and that's for me, in my opinion, honesty is the best way to be really about anything. If you got your friends, if you got a friend that's, that you love, you, you love them dearly. Uh, but you see, hey, you messing up, man. You got to let them know. You got to let them know. It. Don't be afraid to tell them because if you just continue to let them mess up, then are you really a true friend? So, For sure. For sure. Anyway, um, the Ravens, uh, you talked about how y'all have uh, a lot of uh, people from Baltimore uh, on the podcast. You've had a lot of uh, athletes from Baltimore on the podcast. But there's one athlete who is from Maryland. Uh, and he's on a team right now that's mm -hmm. been going through it. Um, the Carolina Panthers, uh, they brought yes. over Baker Mayfield. It ain't work. They brought over Sam Donald. It ain't work. They brought over uh, Matt Rule. It ain't been working, so they got him up out of there. Um, so now yeah. it's looking like, hey, pe people might come available because we've seen it happen time and time again where teams, if they fire the head coach, especially this early in the season, it's, it's, it's week five. They fired uh, Matt Rule and they fired uh, they fired the defensive coordinator. They fired, I think, special team. They fired a couple of coaches. But a lot of times in these situations, 
uh, other teams can benefit because when a team fires a head coach, especially a team that's been struggling for a long time, like the Panthers, uh, other teams can start to pry the players away and whatnot. So the Baltimore Ravens um, right now, they're sitting at three and two. You know their strengths. You know their weaknesses. Is there anybody from the Carolina Panthers who you would like to see the Ravens trade for? And, you, of course, you know there's some popular names out there. Yeah, but for sure. Who, who who would you prefer? Um, so if I had uh, my wish, you know, mm -hmm. uh, if I could dream and get whatever I wanted, obviously it'd be DJ Moore. He's already <laughs> donned the Maryland jersey, so he's familiar yeah. with the area. You know, uh -huh. it'd be like the hometown kid coming home. So that would be dope. But then you also have to recognize the fact that he just resigned for three years, sixty-two million dollars. You know, mm -hmm. so to get him or to acquire him, we would be asking Eric DaCosta and the organization to not only uh, fork up that money, but also fork up draft picks because mm -hmm. uh, Carolina is just not going to give them away. The whole point for them to trade any of these players is to accumulate assets, accumulate draft picks as they start their rebuild. Mm -hmm. So that would be a tough ask. I think the more realistic option was Robbie Anderson. Right. You know, he has a cheap contract. Um, his draft capital probably, you know, as far as what we have to give up would be cheap. And then, you know, I believe he's a rental as well. So that would lower his price a little bit um, mm -hmm. on, the, on that accord. I think Robbie Anderson would be a perfect fit because um, I love what I'm seeing out of uh, Devin Duvernay. He's yeah. honestly surprised me. The way he's mm -hmm. being used, the way Greg, um Greg Roman has decided to use him, I'm mm -hmm. honestly impressed. So you add that with uh, Bateman. Right. So he's your traditional wide receiver one in that X role. Um, and then you have the speed that Robbie Anderson can provide, whether you put him in the slide or whether you spell uh, Demarcus Robinson. Like it's so many options. And I think we just wanted two pieces away on offense from being the consistent top level elite offense that we want to be. Mm. And, and I love how you put that with, with the phrase that you use so many options. Um, and, and that would be a beautiful thing to have. Uh, especially you got Lamar Jackson right now. The, the primary options have just been Mark Andrews, of course, as we know, he one of the best tight ends in the game. Um, and Bateman, of course, before he got hurt and Devin Duvernay. Now, um, as far as the options currently in Baltimore, uh, Duve been doing this thing. I call him now Duve do it all, Vinay. Um, yeah. And yeah, like, like you mentioned, he, he was a big surprise to me. Um, I'm just, a pleasant surprise, though. I'm really very happy to see exactly what he's doing. Like you mentioned, how Greg Roman has been using him. Uh, but the other options, uh, they've been a little quiet. They've been, like, really quiet. Um, and as far as both tight ends and wide receivers. Uh, how you feel right now about a Proche, a Tylen Wallace, uh, Isaiah Likely, um, Oliver, even maybe Nick Boyle, too, because we ain't even really seen him on the field at all. Yeah, so as far as those uh, names are concerned, uh, it's it's still wait and see. There there are a lot of youth and inexperience in that in that group of names that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, as far as Proche and Tylen Wallace, I think Pro, uh, Tylen Wallace had an opportunity to make a play. It's just a, you know it was just a, a bad throw by Lamar. Right. Um, so so it was good to see him get that type of separation deep. Mm -hmm. um, so you know wait and see on that. As far as, you know, the tight ends, Isaiah Likely, I mean, we're asking a lot out of somebody from Coastal Carolina who, you know, coming into the draft, we knew there were some blocking concerns. And to make it on the field as a Baltimore Raven, as a tight end, you got to be able to do both because our run game is our priority, right? right? So when he comes in the game, defenses kind of already know, okay, he's on the field. It's probably going to be a pass play. So once he gets an offseason in the, in the weight room, that's when I think he'll be the guy that we think he'll be. Um, and as far as Nick Boyle, you know, he went through a gruesome, gruesome knee injury. Mm -hmm. And the thing that kind of saved J.K. Dobbins in that regard is, you know, he was one of the most athletic players that, that we've seen, you know, in the last five years. Nick Boyle, not so much. Right. Mm -hmm. So I do think EDC should make a, a move to bolster the offense for depth purposes, mostly, you know, mm -hmm. um, if Bateman goes down, you do have Duvernay. But behind Duvernay, it's kind of sketchy. And mm -hmm. um, we don't want to get into a position where we have to react. I, I'd rather be prepared for any situation. I love it. Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. You know. Now, uh, one, one, one aspect of this Ravens team where they they were ready, but injuries kind of changed everything, and then they went into the season kind of ill-prepared, uh, was at the pass rush position. Um, because it was just Justin Houston and Adafi away 
Um, they had called up Stephen Means for a game, and literally on the first play that Stephen Means got in, he got hurt. The season was done. Of course, we know the story with Ajabo. He's not ready yet. Uh, and with Tyus Bowser, um, he wasn't ready to start the season. I really thought that uh, week five, I thought he was going to be back after week four, and he was going to play week five for sure. But we haven't heard anything about him yet. Um, so we'll see when the Ravens practice tomorrow, if he's back or not, uh, and then go from there. Um, but the pass rush position, uh, Brian Burns. Uh, from the Carolina Panthers, do you think it would be worth it? Especially the the Ravens got they got a Dafe away. They got JPP, and he had a real good game uh, the other day. Um, but do you think a Brian Burns uh, making a move for him could be worth it for the Baltimore Ravens? He's he's a special he's a special talent, and um, you know as you mentioned earlier, Carolina looks to be in a fire sale. So if you can get him at value or at a cost in which you're okay with, you know I will pull the trigger ten times out of ten. One thing I will give EDC credit for is he seems to be able to find value at the linebacker position. I'm not going to say pass rush, but at the linebacker position. So mm. if we had a choice between wide receiver and going to get a Burns, I might lean towards wide receiver just because oh. that's more of an immediate need. I think our defense, honestly, our defense has been playing a lot better over these last two weeks. Mm -hmm. I think they're starting to get a, a lot more comfortable in the, in the new scheme and what McDonald wants to do. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I think. I can be a tad bit encouraged by the pass rush. JBP was making a lot of plays. We actually, we obviously haven't seen him with the entire pass rush crew. I'd like to see him and how he looks with Houston and how, how they play off each other as, as well as Owe and then Bowser, who's a versatile, one of our most versatile defenders on the team when he gets back. And then maybe if you sprinkle in Ojabo towards the stretch run, who knows the possibilities are ending, but uh, defensively, I am liking how it's trending. We're trending up in that regard. Yeah, yeah, you, you ain't you ain't lying about that. Um, because the the first week against the Jets, it was like, okay, all right, hey, we got something here. Uh, then for a while against the Dolphins, it was looking like, all right, hey, it's continuing. And then of course we know how that fourth quarter went, got really ugly. Um, and then even against Mac Jones in week three, uh, I think he threw for over three hundred yards. And the first half he was looking ugly. Um, but he was he was picking on. He was picking on the rookies and he was picking on uh, Brandon Stevens. And that was smart of the Patriots to take advantage of the young corners because uh, Marlon Humphrey, Marcus Peters have been doing their thing. But then against the Bills and against, of course, Joe Burrow and the Bengals, uh, Ravens defense, they've been holding their own. Um, so it's, it seems like they really are turning uh, a corner uh, with that pass defense. And, and if they could bolster that pass rush, if the pass rush could continue to make improvements and they can make strides, then I really do think this defense could take a, a huge step forward. Um, but the last thing you mentioned uh, is that uh, if, if if it came down to having a pick between a wide receiver and a pass rusher, uh, you would take a wide receiver. And, and I, I agree. I, I do agree with that, especially this current state of the Ravens, uh, because I feel like that would just do so much for them. One thing um, that does get lost uh, in the win against the Bengals, um, something that is is still – a big factor uh, is the second half scoring offense. Nice. Um, the Ravens, and I didn't even realize this, but the Ravens, they didn't get a touchdown uh, in the second half of the game. It was just field goals. And we love that they took their points because they played a lot smarter than the previous week. But the scoring offense has still been an issue. Um, and that would be one of my biggest reasons for wanting them to, to get a receiver, especially if they had the choice. Um, I would love... Like you made a oh, love of DJ Moore. Love it. Would love it. Love it. Love it. Um, don't think it's gonna happen, but I would love it. Yeah. Uh, but Robbie Anderson, I do think is a little bit more realistic, especially like you mentioned uh, when you talked about the uh the contract. And um if if you could pick, and I know that's kind of a crazy question, but okay. if you could pick any wide receiver for the Ravens to trade for or any pass rusher for the Ravens to trade for before the trade deadline to really help get this team over the top. I know. Uh, yeah, I know. Any? I mean, that's, that's stressful. Any. It doesn't any. have to be realistic? Any. <laughs> any. Listen, any. If, it's, if, it's, if we're not talking uh, being realistic, give me Debo. Somebody oh, really? who somebody who could uh, get yards after the catch consistently for Lamar. So somebody that can turn 10 yards into 80. You know, mm -hmm. that's – Sometimes that's all the offense needs, and that's and that's kind of why I was going towards that wide receiver over pass rusher um, 
kind of point of view because sometimes you just need skill talent to help your quarterback. It doesn't mm-hmm. always have to be Lamar making the 60, 70 yard throw. Sometimes, like um versus the I think it was the Patriots game. Um, not sorry, excuse me, it wasn't the Patriots game. It was the Jets game where Rashad uh, Bateman caught that slant and took it to the house. Sometimes is is things like that where you know just one play can turn around a game. One play can make a court a a, a, a an important difference for your quarterback how his day yeah. is going um between a catch and and, and the incompletion um uh, or catch and the interception sometimes so mm-hmm. um yeah, that's a tough question to ask because i you yeah, know if i could I have know. my pick of the litter boy I'd, I'd have a whole fantasy team in baltimore <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think we all would man but um yeah. yeah just it's it's about making your quarterback's job uh that much easier and that's what really good wide receivers do uh they help them out but uh any- engraving engraving yeah. I uh, don't mean to cut you off. You mentioned earlier kind of going back to Carolina and, and us mm-hmm. not scoring uh, in the second half. One thing that I did want to mention is I was watching the Carolina San Francisco game and they were talking about Sh- Kyle Shanahan. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and one of the things that they were mentioning is Kyle Shanahan goes into a game yeah. with the script. So oh, he yeah, scripts the first 21 plays, something like that. Yep. And then at halftime rips up that script and it's an entire new script based on the feel of the game. And that's mm-hmm. something that I would love to see Greg Roman do more often. Mm-hmm. Not saying that he doesn't do it. It's just the optics. It seems like um, we come with the script and we stick with the script mm-hmm. as opposed to adjusting and adapting. If we right. could do that, I, like we're tweaks away from being the Super Bowl team that we want to be. We have right. the talent. We have the coaching. We have the minds. We just have to approach approach the, the game plans and and. um you know, just the feel of the game, even going back to Harbaugh's decision making, just feel of the game over mm-hmm. analytics and all of that. Yeah, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Feel of the game uh, over analytics because it, it's not a computer out there on the football field. Uh, oh. it's, it's it's the players, man. And in, in the heat of the moment, you, you just got to go with your gut. Don't go with the numbers. Go with your gut and, and try to win. But anyway, uh, I, I appreciate you coming on. Sure. Uh, I appreciate you, you uh, sharing some of your time with us. Uh, and one more time before we get out of here, let everybody know where they can find you. At. Again, you can find us on Instagram at Nitty Gritty Sports Talk, Twitter, Nitty Gritty 410. Check us out. Our link is on the bio. Always appreciate Engraving Biz. He's a GOAT. Make sure you, uh, if you haven't subscribed, definitely subscribe. Um, best in the city. I appreciate you, man. Ain't you no know chance what I mean. Two team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, gotta made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven, right and graven. Shout out to engraving.